Hello everyone, I'm Tim and a warm welcome to you to my channel. Today we're going to talk about auto layouts and how we use them in 2022 to create professional designs faster and easier. We'll touch on things like what auto layout is, why we even use auto layout, and also how we use it in practice. So what is auto layout? It's actually very, very, very simple. When you look at the web world, you have something called the Flexbox model. That's how you structure content on the web. When you look at Figma, you have auto layout. That's our equivalent of the Flexbox model. It's a way to structure content. Now, why use auto layout? Three things. The first being scalability. So let's say you have a table, or let's say you have a table row, and you wrap that table row into an auto layout. Now, if you duplicate the table row, it's gonna be super easy to make that into a table. Which brings us to the next point, which is about consistency. If we wanna change the spacing between these row items, we can do that in one place super easily. Which also brings us to the third point about control. If we wanna have 12 pixels, 16 pixels, eight pixels, it doesn't matter. You can do it in one place. It's gonna be consistently controlled across the board. Okay, so we're in Figma. Let's see what we can do with this. First of all, we're gonna start by just creating an auto layout. Shift A, there you have your auto layout. Shift A or right click and add auto layout. Next up, alignment. In the right sidebar, we'll see this auto layout section. Here, we can change the alignment of the items within our auto layout. Item spacing. We have two or more items. We can change the spacing over here with this spacing between items option. Direction. If we want to change from vertical to horizontal of the items within our auto layout. Paddings. We can change just the horizontal axes for the vertical or individually like this. Also, a little hack, if you click command and then click on an input field and you can change everything at once like that. Spacing mode. Here we go into the advanced layout settings. We have the first option called spacing mode. Right now it's packed. We set it to space between, it's gonna space things in the layout like this. Next is strokes, inclusion versus exclusion. Once again, advanced settings. Now it's included, which means that the strokes, so if we have eight pixel stroke width here, it's gonna be included in the layout. It's gonna push the content. If we exclude it, it's not gonna push the content. So you can see how the circle went to the sides, and now it's pushed by the strokes again. Canvas stacking. So once again, advanced layout. We can show the first on top or the last on top, just like this. Text base alignment. So if we have different text sizes, this is a very neat thing. Click advanced again. We can check this to get them to be on the same baseline, like this. Then we have resizing. So right now, if we set this, and by the way, we need to look in the top right corner here. So we have horizontal resizing and we have vertical resizing. If we change to fixed width here, and we resize this all the way up, it's not gonna be responsive. If we change it to fill, it is. Same with text. Now it's fixed. If we resize it, it's not gonna work. If we set it to fill, it's gonna work. We also have hug here, which means that the text just spans for as long as we write. If we set it to fill again, as you can see, it's once again responsive. Okay, and the last one, absolute position. So here we have an auto layout with a title, a body text, and 
a rectangle. Let's say I want this in the top right corner. Well, then we can just use what's called absolute position. So I click that, and then I can drag it up to the top. And it's no longer adhering to the auto layout constraints. Okay, so I just have to chime in here real quick. For me, the most exciting feature is the one we just talked about, absolute positioning. Before, in my layouts, I would have to create a frame. In that frame, I would be able to place things. So if I wanted something in the top right corner of a card, for example, I would create a frame and place it in there and then drag it to the top. With position absolute, I just click one button and then put it in the top right. Now, I'm excited to hear what you guys think are the best or most exciting features. Please comment below. I'll be super happy to read and see what you guys think. Okay, so let's recreate this card. I've prepared, I've prepared the, things the things down, down here. here. We have a tag, we have an image, we have the title, the body, another title, avatars, and then we have a button. So first step, add an auto layout to this. Add a fill so that we can see what we're doing. So we have this auto layout. Now we're gonna start adding auto layouts to things that belong together. So we have the proposal title here and the body, they belong together. We have the avatars, they belong together. Avatars plus their title belong together. Can change the positioning here starts to make sense we have the tag up here which is going to be in the top left corner so we can add position absolute or absolute position to that then also we know that this button is going to be in the same row as the avatars and their uh, title so let's add a bounding box to them as well or an auto layout to those as well that and then let's place it in the bottom and we have pretty much the structure we need now the next step is to start adding fill to everything so not adding fill as in fill color but the resizing option fill so I'll start here fill container fill container Fill container. Even though some things might not need it, I'll just add it everywhere to make sure that it's responsive. Fill. 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 And now let's see how it works. Okay, so it's responsive. Everything seems to move the way we want it to. Now it's just about styling. So let's add the white fill color. Let's change the corner radius. We need to have clip content so that it shows because the image otherwise doesn't clip. Let's actually add a padding to these. But since, or if we want to keep it as minimal as possible, I would add an auto layout to these two. So combine them into one auto layout. Then I'll add padding to just this one. And now you can see that it's no longer behaving the way we want to because now we have hug here instead of fill, for example. And the things within, because of this, because we added another auto layout, are gonna be screwed up a bit. So let's see if we can fix it. Like that, does it work now? Yes, it does. And in this container, the bottom part of the card, we might want to add a little something like that. And here for the creators, we, we might well, uh, we we might want to add some spacing as well. 12 maybe looks good, I think. Here, this is a bit too tight, maybe 8 pixels. Let's go for that. Let's see. Yes, yes, looks good. Okay, so just add the last shadow here. Bum, like that. And here it is, the card layout, people. And that's it. 
that is really it. Auto layout is super simple when you just kind of grasp the concept of it. It's just a way to structure things. And it makes your workflow so much easier. So much easier. Now, before you leave, please consider helping out by either giving me a subscribe. That would help a lot with this tiny, tiny little channel. It would be, it'd be so appreciated. You could comment in the comment section below, tell me what you want to see next, what, like, what do you want me to cover. Liking this video would be super helpful as well. And if you want to know when I do create new videos, the bell notification is a great way to do it. That's it for this time. Thank you for watching, people. Have a great day, night, or whatever it is where you're at right now. We'll talk in the next one. Thank you.